Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Welcome to the first entry in a series I'm calling Mythos Miscellany. Try saying that five times fast. Covering expansions to games I've already reviewed, or material that doesn't necessarily fit my core book review style. There's been plenty of advanced versions of books or some degree of expansion that introduces things to a game sandbox that can, at times, change how the core rules are approached. For example, Adventure Conqueror King System is a solid game on its own, but becomes a must-own with the inclusion of the Player's Companion. Pathfinder had a similar flirtation with this kind of thing, with books like the Advanced Player's Guide, and more relevant, Pathfinder Unchained. This brings me to the subject matter of today, BESM Extras. In the interest of disclosure, I will note that I've interviewed Mark McKinnon several times, and I backed this book on Kickstarter. But that will not play a factor into my assessment. Now, running at 146 pages, Extras is essentially the advanced rules for BSM 4th Edition. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Now, yes, for the first time, I'm going chapter by chapter. I'm not doing coverage on layout, because I'd largely be repeating what I said in my 4th edition review. Although this one does have better bookmarks, so you've got that going for you. Anyways, Extra introduces, rather reintroduces, some mechanics familiar to Basm veterans. This chapter reflects some of that, starting with additional options for several attributes and defects. Often, this takes the form of new enhancements and limiters for attributes, and three new defects. Each of these expansions are clearly designed for the expanded game mechanics presented in the book later. However, the biggest addition to this chapter is the return of shock value and sanity points. The former is a derived value based on your maximum HP divided by 5, and is increased by 10 each time you take the hard-boiled combat technique attribute, up to half of your maximum HP. If a character suffers greater than this value, they must take a soul roll to avoid being stunned or knocked out. If they fail by a margin up to their soul stat, they're stunned. Otherwise, they're knocked unconscious. Sanity, meanwhile, is meant for games that aim for horror or the paranormal themes. A character has a number of sanity points equal to their mind plus soul stats. The unassailable attribute increases your sanity by 2 for each level of that attribute you get, and the unsettled defect reduces it by 2. On occasion, a GM may ask for a sanity roll which is, as usual, 2d6, plus in this case the average between mind and soul, with point loss happening on a failure depending on the degree of such. The core book relegated skills to the domain of the skill group attribute, but this chapter introduces skills as an attribute on its own, each skill ranked at 1 through 6 and costing 1 to 3 points depending on the skill. Now each skill has a list of specializations that adds a minor edge, i.e. roll 3 and drop the lowest, when applicable. There are three tiers of skills. Framework skills cost one point per rank, adventure skills cost two, and genre costs three. The dividing line between is how much of an impact they have in a given storyline. The expanded mechanics chapter is all about expanding combat in its various forms, adding more actions, maneuvers, and new avenues for combat with mass and social combat. There's also a nice little flowchart for combat that I foresee getting printed during demos and one-shots. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the return of grappling, with enough maneuvers to make a wrestler build actually viable. Lastly, the inclusion of mass and social combat. Because Besom is a narrative-leaning game, mass combat is not as detailed as it might be in other games that I've covered, like, say, Exalted. In Extras, a one-roll approach using the respective army leader's attack and defense combat value, plus a appropriate skill level. Social Combat, on the other hand, introduces two new derived values. The first is Social Combat Value, which is based on the average of your mind and soul stats. Second is Society Points, which acts as a social mirror to hit points, equal to your Social Combat Value. During Social Combat, damage is rooted in the margin of success, inflicting 1 to 5 damage based on this. Now, Chapter 4, Optional Rules, is a grab bag of rules for the base mechanics. First among these is the addition of critical hits and failures, activated on a margin of 12 or negative 12 respectively, in terms of degrees of success, not in terms of die rolls. The former allows damage to be doubled, while the latter forces a roll on the fumble table. In addition, a margin of success system is introduced here, 
as an alternative to the binary resolution approach. One of the non-combat optional rules is alternate stat costs. Increasing stats normally costs 2 points per value, but there are alternate rules for stat advancement. The first of these uses the Fibonacci sequence, adding the two previous numbers for each subsequent value, i.e. 1 costs 0, 2 costs 1, 3 costs 2, 4 costs 5, and so on. The intent is to make advancement relatively cheap at low level, medium cost at mid-level, and more expensive at high level. The second method is called free then five, aimed for more low-level setups where the first four values are free and values of five or more cost five points each. The third method is bracket. In this, values one to three cost one point, and then the point cost is increased by two for each group of three values. Lastly, this chapter introduces the idea of fixed levels. Instead of giving a set of character points, they could be given a set of level guidelines based on the power tier of the campaign, assigning these to a number of attributes and defects as noted. For example, a heroic tier assignment would grant three attributes at levels 1 through 3 each, one at level 5, and two defects at level 1, and one defect at levels 2 and 3. The Exploring Damage chapter is meant to expand on the means of dishing out damage, through damage types and alternative penalties. Some of these are tied to the margin of success system, while others are whole new systems in and of themselves. Many of the damage types presented here would be relegated to damage type sections, often seen in the GM part of some games. Now the Packs and Bundles chapter could be considered a nice little middle ground between full pregens and full freeform. It's essentially a package of attributes and defects based on a theme. The former could be considered the style of power use, where bundles are a set of pre-made effects and their associated math. In other words, you could look at it as magical traditions for the former and your arcane or divine setups for the latter. Now the Adventuring Elements chapter is intended to add color to campaigns, many of these being in the GM guide end of mechanics, such as poisons, disease, and deprivation. However, much of this I had to gloss over because it's rooted in suggestions instead of hard and fast rules. The exceptions to this is customizers for firearms and vehicles, but this chapter is the most grab baggiest of this very grab bag book. Now, items and weapons is the toy box, if I may use a term if I haven't used in my videos in years. This contains a set of attribute and defect packages based on certain items' themes. Some of it is mundane equipment, while others are far larger in scale and effect. However, this isn't necessarily a typical equipment list merely an extensive list of examples to utilize in themed campaigns. Now, last chapter is Dice List Besom. One of Besom's chief inspirations was Amber, a monolith of diceless play. Thus, a diceless variant of Besom appears to bring things full circle. Unfortunately, it's not going to take that much work to go diceless with it, since Besom plays things rather light. So, conversion is pretty simple. Any roll in normal circumstances would be considered hedged, i.e. die rolls that have a result of 7, with edges and obstacles modifying the result by 1 for minor and 2 for major, respectively. Additionally, diceless rules issue attack and defense combat values and instead combine them to form a unified combat value. This means that attack mastery and defense mastery attributes are combined into a combat mastery attribute that costs 2 points per level, each level adding one to your combat value. Now this applies as well with ranged attributes, adding plus two to combat value in the appropriate situation, i.e. when using a ranged attack. It's not uncommon for games to have a grab bag book, as I mentioned before. One that contains a variety of items the designers didn't have room to place in the core book, or in some cases didn't have time. Extras is not necessarily one of those books. It's far more akin to the advanced moniker I gave at the beginning of this video. Now, not every edition presented here is meant to be used all at once. It's rather designed to be picked and chosen from as appropriate to what the GM wishes to do. This does mean the GM probably has to set ground rules akin to writing a primer for what is and isn't permissible, but this is a common drawback of Universal games. I'd say the biggest inclusion that makes extras worth the price of admission is Chapter 6. Everything else is nice, but the packs and bundles scratches an itch that's rarely done in this kind of freeform play, providing crunch medium options for characters. That said, 
How much I'd recommend it depends on what side of the screen you're on. If you're a GM for a Besom game, this is an absolute must. If you're a player, it's not going to hurt, but I wouldn't call it a deal breaker without it. Most expansions try to add just more stuff. Extras doesn't really do that, but instead expands on what's already there, or packages what's been present in new ways. Ultimately, I'd only recommend it to people who've already gotten their feet wet with Besom and want to do more with it. For those just getting in, stick to the core for now. And no, I still have absolutely no plans to, co to cover Besom naked. Oh. Uh -huh.